So welcome to Trey Raid Radio, and I think this is our, our 16th show, actually. I'm joined by my colleague, Matt Ingham, and we're going to take you through some wonderful sounds, mainly Trey Red, but also some non Trey Red releases. And we're going to start with a compilation we've just put out, three CD compilation, called Riding the Rock Machine, British 70s Classic Rock. I'm going to play three tracks back to back. A Lucky Man by ELP, Life is a Minestrone by 10cc, and Robert's Box, Procol Harum. See what you think of these. Maybe you haven't heard them for a few years. He had white horses and ladies by the score. Dressed in satin and waiting by the door. Ooh, what a lucky man he was. Ooh, what a lucky man he was. White lace and feathers. They made up his bed A gold-covered mattress On which he was led King of his honor and his glory, the people would sing. Blood ran as he cried. No 
So that would have brought back some memories, I think, for some people. That was three tracks from the new uh, three-CD box set we've got out, which is called Riding the Rock Machine. And uh, that was ELP's Lucky Man, 10cc's Life is a Minestrone, and Proko Haram's Robert Box. And all really interesting tracks, and all tracks I loved at the time. Um, Lucky Man was actually written by Greg Lake, when he was 12 years old. You know, what a great song to write when you're so young. Just so shows how talented he was. It came out as a single, and it was a, an early Moog synthesizer uh, feature. It wasn't a hit, but it came out in 1970. Now, 10cc, that really brought back memories for me, that track, because many years ago, I used to work for Arista Records, um, well, that was many, many years ago before, obviously, I started Trey Red, and that would be about 45 years ago. And um, when I worked there, I, I, I got friendly with everybody who, uh, who ran all the departments. And uh, so I got friendly with the promotion people, the marketing people, the A&R people, the press people. So I was always getting involved with different things. And one day, the A&R man, who was a guy called Andrew Bailey, said... Do you want to come to Manchester with me one day next week? I'm going to, I'm going to see some, uh, some, some bands play in a contest and I'm going to visit the 10cc studios, Strawberry Studios in Stockport because they've got a new album and they want us to hear it. I thought that's great because I like 10cc. So anyway, went up to Manchester on the train and um, the, uh, the, the Battle of the Bands competition wasn't so great. But then we got the train to Stockport, Strawberry Studios and Andrew and I sat there with two members of the band and listened to the whole album, which was, of course, their third album, which came out as the original soundtrack. And it was just so brilliant because we're hearing it in the band studio. Two of them were there to talk us through various things. 
And I was so excited because I thought, well, if we can sign them for Arista Records, that would be a real coup. And I had all these ideas on the train back. And I could be the two tracks, the standout tracks for me was Life is a Manistroni and uh, I'm Not in Love. And I thought, they're so different. We could almost put those out at the same time as, as singles. Um, but anyway... It wasn't to be because uh, that evening when we got back, Andrew called Clive Davis, the head of Arista in New York. Very enthusiastic, uh, Andrew was, and Clive was somehow less than enthusiastic. And the deal never happened, which is a shame because uh, the album got to number three, but I think uh, Phony Ram paid over a million pounds for it. So maybe the feeling in America was it wasn't quite worth that. So anyway... Um, Procol Harum, of course, Cherry Red have been in what, involved with the last few years. And uh, Matt, you're going to talk a little bit about Procol Harum because we've got, a, we've got a new single coming out as well. We do, band. thanks. Yeah, hi, Ian. Um, we do. We have a new uh, single. It's actually a sort of mini EP that we're releasing from the band uh, in May. Two uh, brand new tracks and there's a radio edit as well, which is what we'll play for you today. But um, yeah, a kind of new studio offering. Um, that was sort of offcuts or that discovered by Gary in in lockdown by Gary Brooker, but um, really sort of stand actually stand alone. It's it's I shouldn't have called them offcuts really because they are great songs in their own right and a sort of really good um, addition to Procol Harum's catalogue. Uh, and they they've got both timely quite timely lyrics as well for the time we're living in at the moment and everything that's going on. So, yeah, the song is called Missing Persons, and uh, and here it is. Baby is torn from her mother's arms the child that was born to be protected from harm a river of tears and an ocean of pain in the briefest of moments the whole world is changed you knew who fell on hard times a voice on the phone that got lost between lines who slipped in a dark place and fell through the cracks got caught in a bad space and couldn't get back
And that was Missing Persons by uh, Procol Harum, which is out on May the 8th. OK. Um, and, of course, Arthur Brown. We're going to play an Arthur Brown, Brown track next and from his Kingdom Come years. And, of course, Arthur Brown's a great friend of Trey Red, and we all get on really well with him. He's a, he's a lovely man. He really is. And we're putting out a box set of three Kingdom Come albums. That's... Galactic Zoo Dossier, Kingdom Come and Journey, which were originally, originally recorded in the early 70s. Um, and it's sort of interesting, interesting history there because uh, Arthur Brown originally had the crazy world of Arthur Brown with uh, had, had Vincent Crane on keyboards and Carl Palmer, another connection there with uh, Emerson, Lake and Palmer, Carl Palmer on drums. And they left in, I think it was late 60s, to form Atomic Rooster. So Arthur formed this new band and uh, called called Kingdom Come. Uh, three really interesting, quite different albums and uh, the box set will be fascinating. Anyway, we're going to play Sunrise. <laughs> Thank you. 
Very long but far away And you may search This whole wide world longing for beauty But never listen Never listen What a man say You got to be What you are Or you will never understand That was Sunrise by uh, Arthur Brown's Kingdom Come. And then Highland and New York again have a box set coming out on uh, Trey Red shortly. And uh, they were involved with the Spencer Davis group uh, previously. And they had, oh, I think they did six albums uh, on their own as Highland and York. And we're going to play Tomorrow Today. <laughs> Tomorrow's light is as dark as hell. 
while I'm still on my feet. The Holy Ghost tomorrow standing, she's knocking on my front door. And I can't seem to be making it out. The bitch for me anymore. Hey, turn around, take a look at yourself. You can't see tomorrow today. Hey, turn around, take a look at yourself. You wanna get it, but you don't wanna pay. Some nights you realize how empty they can be. When you're falling so far, how deep can you see? Then some cruel old lady floats down on her cloud. She's so much like a head bang. She's like a dad making a scream out loud. Then turn around, take a look at yourself. You can't see tomorrow today. So that was Harden in York, Tomorrow Today, and that was actually off this six CD box set. That particular album it's off is called The World's Smallest Big Band. So let's move on to Ray Fennick, who we've recently done a deal with, uh, with Ray to acquire much of his catalogue, a very interesting, quite fascinating career. So Matt, you're going to talk a bit, a bit about Ray, aren't you? Yes, well, you've you've chosen a track, I think, which is one of uh, which is Apache. Yeah, you know, I, I, I listened to it, and the, for me, the, the the standout track was an instrumental Apache. Mm. And of course, we all know the track from the Shadows. Exactly. Uh, yeah, was a big hit in its day. But I thought Ray's version was just fantastic. It's it is just... a great version. It really is, and um, yeah, we're we're very lucky to be working with Ray. So you've you've chosen that track, and the one of the tracks that struck me was um, was a song called "We Persuade Ourselves We Are Immortal," which is actually a track by the amorphous Androgynous, who are sort of the offshoot of a British electronic music group. Um, they've done this album. Ray plays on it. He plays lead guitar, and on that album, you also find people like Peter Hamill from Van de Graaff Generator. Um, and Brian Hopper from Caravan and Soft Machine. So, yeah, it's a very strange album. And this song that I've chosen does appear on our Ray Fennick anthology. So it kind of, it's a great, you know, collection because it takes Ray's career from start right up until 2020 when this song was released. So we'll play those two songs for you now. Uh, the first is Apache and the second is we persuade ourselves we are immortal.
Well, that was a bit of Ray Fennick for you. And uh, moving on, we're going to stick with a sort of prog theme. And I've... Actually, I was going to say that I'm just thinking that Ray, of course, was in the Spencer Davis group at one time. He was, actually. He was also involved with Harden and York. So there's also a time with the previous track we played there. Fantastic. See, that's, that's how... sequencing. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that is how it works. Um, that's worked very well. Um, but moving on, I think I'm going to pick a track from Rare Bird, who are a sort of progressive rock band, late 60s, I think they started. We're doing a, a sort of anthology box set of theirs, which covers all their studio albums. They didn't have a great deal of success in the UK, but they did in Europe. And they had one track um, called Sympathy, which we'll play for you now. And that was their charting single. That was the one that, uh, if you know Rare Bird, you'll know this. Sympathy. Now when you climb into your bed tonight And when you lock and bolt the door Just think of those out in the cold and dark Cause there's not enough love to go round And sympathy Is what we need my friend And sympathy Is what we need And sympathy Is what we need my friend Cause there's no other half and half the world has all the food and half the world lies down and quietly stops cause there's not enough love to go around and sympathy what we need, my friend, and sympathy is what we need, and sympathy is what we need, my friend, cause there's not enough love to go around, no there's not enough love to go around. That was Sympathy by Rare Bird. I think we'll move on slightly, shall we, to... um, Why not have a bit of Toya? Because we've got uh, a really good uh, relationship with Toya at the moment. We have acquired a lot of her catalogue from the Safari years. We're embarking on a huge campaign, reissue campaign with her. Um, The next one being The Blue Meaning at the end of May. Uh, And we played a track... Last last month, I think we played the first track off the album, but this time I'm going to play the early original version of "It's a Mystery," which is of course a you know first hit single in 1981, and this is by by the band Blood Donor, which features Toya. Well, so, it's Keith Hale who wrote it, isn't it? It Keith is, Keith yeah. Hale's band, and actually, the original version, which I still haven't heard, I've been asking for it. Apparently, according to Toya, it's 38 minutes long. I'm just intrigued by that, and they cut it right down to a, a three and a half minute song. Well, we have to get that track and play it on Cherry Red Radio. <laughs> I'll leave that to you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Coming soon, anyway. But for now, here's It's a Mystery by Toya. So 
That was a bit of Toya for you, and not not the last you'll hear from her, I'm sure. And Ian, I think you're going to chat about our next act, which is Mercury Rev. Yeah, uh, Mercury Rev I've always loved since their early days, and they've been on lots of different labels, all independent labels, all UK independent labels, although they are an American band. And we're we're very lucky to be looking after some of the back catalogue of the band, and we're putting out the album Snowflake Midnight, shortly and I'm going to play two tracks from that album which I really love back to back 
The first one's called Snowflake in a Hot World, and the second one's called Senses on Fire.
That was Mercury Rev, Snowflake in a Hot World and Senses on Fire, both tracks taken from the album Snowflake Midnight, which is coming out, I think, as a four CD box set with loads of bonus tracks, which is going to be wonderful, I'm sure. And uh, that actually came out after the Secret Migration album, which we did release uh, end of last year. And it got to number 52, Snowflake Midnight did in the, in the UK charts. There's a great interview that you've done with Jonathan from Mercury Rev. Um, it was a couple of years ago, I think, but you did talk to him about the band's history. I think you talk about this album and obviously there are other albums. And uh, certainly yeah. he came to the UK, didn't he? Back when you could. Yeah, <laughs> They came and did some dates, and I couldn't come to the London date because it was the f same night as our office dinner, Christmas <laughs> office dinner. So one had to be sacrificed. Exactly. Well, the cherry red office dinner is so rock and roll, you, you just can't yeah. miss that, you know. But I have seen them play. They're, yeah. they're always impeccable. Like yeah. That. But there is a, yeah, there's a really good interview with Ian and yeah. Jonathan from Mercury Rev, which is on our YouTube channel. Not to mention my good interviews with Toya and Arthur Brown. And Arthur well. Brown, yeah. Played We're making our way down the list, yeah, for sure. Yeah. Um, well, it was April 1st recently, April Fool's Day. So I've, I thought I'd better pick a song that came out on April Fool's Day. And it came out on April Fool's Day 47 years ago. I'm not going to tell you who the band are or what the song is just yet. Um, but I will tell you that... Apparently, the record, when it was originally released, sold so poorly, it sold 40 copies. And that was then. I mean, now it sold quite a few more. But uh, <laughs> listen to this, see what you think, and I'll, I'll let you know what it is after the, after the song. Well, I'm sure you guessed who that was, but uh, if you didn't, I'll uh, put you out of your misery. It was a cover of Lee Hazelwood and Nancy Sinatra's boots. Well, these boots are made for walking, but it was, of course, The Residents. The first track off their first studio album, Meet The Residents, which was uh, was out April the 1st, uh, 47 years ago. And, and did, uh, did we have an April Fool at Trey this year? We, we didn't this year. We didn't this year, but we were already... Thinking about next what we can year, do next yeah. year, yeah. yeah I, remember, <laughs> I remember years ago when I worked at Arista Records, I just thought of this. I did an April Fool one day and I sent this memo around to all the staff saying I'd spoken to Clive Davis, who was the US president uh, of Arista, and he had suggested that we, for one day of the week we reverse roles and the cleaner would be managing director and the uh, financial controller would be head of marketing. And I, I, I changed all the roles around. And I sent in those days, obviously, there's no email. It was just, just memos. I just printed memos. I sent it around. A lot of people uh, oh, believed no. it and were, were outraged <laughs> by it. It was very funny. <laughs> that's fantastic. It's always worth trying an April Fool. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Well, that's given me some ideas for next year, that's for sure. Um, but moving on with the with the music, you're going to chat about something that we've yeah. recently acquired. I well, think. yes, um, our sturdy head of catalogue, uh, John Reed, has been involved with three recent deals. He's, he's acqu we're acquiring stuff every week, really, because um, we love bringing back catalogue to life. And John's finding a lot of catalogue that's just in a cupboard or underneath people's beds, just doing nothing. So, uh, and that's our role in life. These as a chair read, it's kind of we call it historical A and R. Anyway, we have three new signings, and the first one is an English band called Arrival. And they actually did have um, a top ten hit with a, 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 a track called Friends, which I think was the early 70s. 
and they also play, appeared at the Isle of Wight Festival in 1970. Anyway, we'll start with that, Friends by Arrival. That was Friends by Arrival. And I'm going to play two more uh, new signings of, uh, of uh, catalogue, back to back. The first is by uh, Strange Ways, uh, a band from Glasgow called The Kid Needs Love. And then Bardo, um, who have a track called Witchfire. <laughs> Give me love. 
that was Strange Ways, The Kid Needs Love, and Bardo with Witchfire. And then an act that I've always uh, really enjoyed over the years is Alice Cooper. He doesn't, he doesn't change his formula very much, it has to be said. You go and watch him live, it's a very similar show, but he always has some new songs. And he has an excellent new album out on Idel Records, and uh, I've picked a track from that called Hanging on a Thread, brackets, don't give up, close brackets. And I was going to play it and uh, suggest you try and guess who it was. But unfortunately, there's a huge giveaway at the end of the track. Here it is. Yeah, I know you're struggling right now. We all are, in different ways. It's like a new world that we don't even know. It's hard to sleep, even harder to dream. But look, you got seven billion brothers and sisters all in the same boat. So don't panic. Life has a way of surviving and going on and on. We're not fragile, and we sure don't break easy. You know it's so hard to cope when you're just hoping there's hope. We're all... It would hate you. It's a monster, a cold, deadly phantom. It hides in the heart and brain, dreadful and merciless. It has no shape or form. It's demonic. It has no rules. It will confine you to a dark, lifeless room if you allow it. So fight back. Shine a light on it. And most of all, don't give up. You know that is right. So we just gotta fight. Yeah, we're all. Alice Cooper in Detroit. Let's keep fighting. Don't give up. Call the Suicide Prevention Hotline, 1-800-273-8255. That was Hanging on a Thread, brackets, Don't Give Up, by Alice Cooper, and that's from his new album on Adele called Detroit Stories, which uh, was, I think, it was a top three album when it came out a couple of weeks ago. And then the Glitter Band. I know this is a bit of a change from Alice Cooper, but the Glitter Band, of course, were Gary Glitter's backing, originally his backing band. Gary Glitter, unfortunately, these days is, uh, is a man with, with a reputation that's ruined. Very sad, that. Anyway, the Glitter Band um, kept going, and they still play some gigs. They've lost a few personnel, um, but they still 
play some gigs. And they were on Bell Records when I worked there. And uh, they had several hits. And we, we have a collection coming out of the Glitter Band uh, singles, two CD collection. And this is actually their last hit. They had se several singles after that, but this is their last chart hit from 1976, People Like You and People Like Me. Somebody to lean on if we wanna stay free. I'll come together and maybe we'll see people like you and people like I hear people who say we should all live together and I pray for that day. Some are lonely and dissatisfied. Give a hand to the Somebody to lean on if we want to stay free I'll come together and maybe we'll see People like you and people like me Men and they greet and they keep on abusing All those people in need that be an end An to it all if you just stop and listen People Like You and People Like Me from the Glitter Band. And we're going to go to uh, back to Matt now, talk about Mark Harmon. Yeah, from glam to glamorous. I think I've um, chosen a song by Mark Harmon that hit the top 30 when it was released in 1990. And that was A Lover Spurned from his album Enchanted. I think a s sort of sixth studio album that he'd released and we're planning a sort of deluxe cd and dvd version and there's also a two lp vinyl version coming soon as well with it <clears throat> um wonderful album great artist i think this is um a brilliant song and one that i think mark at the time didn't like as much as he likes now so um really sort of ripe for reevaluation, really so yeah, this is A Lover Spurned by Mark Almond. A lover spurned A lesson
And that was Mark Almond. And from Mark to Frank, I think, next. Well, also a huge musical difference. <laughs> Very much but so. But both incredible characters. Indeed. In their own unique way. And Frank, Frank Sidebottom, of course, was Chris Seavey, who's departed a few years ago, which was a great shame. I really enjoyed hanging out with Chris. He was, uh, he was such a character. And, of course, his uh, alter ego was Frank Sidebottom. And uh, Frank actually had a documentary all about him, which was quite a highly regarded documentary. And uh, I'm going to play, anyway, a, a, a track from Frank, which actually is featured in a in a film we both watched mm. called Dennis and Lois. Fantastic. It film. was wasn't it brilliant? It was really amazing. Briefly it's about a husband and wife, two fanatical music music fans who love live music, would travel all over Europe and, and America to watch bands play. And they had these really close relationships with big, big bands like yeah. New Order. A lot of them from Manchester. Yes. You know, and I know um Chris and Frank Chris See, he was from Timperley, wasn't he? Yeah. He was a northern uh, musician, and they got on with him very well. Yeah, a lot of the bands used to stay in their house. <laughs> yeah. And the house was so full of all kinds Toys of... Toys and games oh, and everything. unbelievable, yeah. yeah. Uh, but anyway, enough of this talking. We're going to play from Frank Sidebottom, the Monopoly song. the Monopoly song by Frank Sidebottom and from one character to yet another character Edward Bourne another another good Trey Red friend in, in fact I must remember now to tell I knew I had a Frank Sidebottom story uh, which I'll tell briefly and uh, so uh, Frank uh, Chris really Chris was a was a was a real fanatical Manchester City fan and this was back before the oil years this is back when they were not a very good team and we're in the second tier of English football. They were in the third tier at one time, second tier. And um, the, the, the old Cherry Red office was near, very near Craven Cottage, the, the, Fulham, the Fulham ground. So I invited uh, Frank along to see uh, Fulham play Manchester City one evening along with Michael Healy, another good friend of ours. Anyway, and, and Chris is always so positive about everything. And at half time, Fulham were winning 3-0. So Manchester City had a real uphill struggle to get anything out of the game. And he was saying, quite a loud voice, no problem, City will get four in the second half. <laughs> and you have to admire his spirit and positivity. And of course, City didn't score at all in the second <laughs> half. So they lost. But it's just, I love spending time with him uh, when he was here because he, he, he was a great guy. And Ed Ball's another real, real character who we love at Cherry Red. And uh, he's done many, many things in his career. He's been in many bands, and we've played a lot of them on, on Trey Red uh, Radio over the years. 
And there's another film, actually, which um, I haven't seen, which you can talk about after we play the track, um, Matt. And uh, it's called Creation Stories, the film. And this track by Ed Ball, the Mill Hill Self-Hate Club, is featured in that film. And that was the Mill Hill Self-Hate Club by Ed Ball, who was, of course, if you haven't guessed it already, in Creation Stories, which is the new film about Alan McGee and his time with Creation Records and, um, you know, starting that up and signing Oasis and all that kind of a really quite a funny, funny film, quite interesting, a lot of characters in there, probably a little bit cartoonish perhaps or you know overblown but of course you in knew Alan from the early days in fact when he came down to London to start creation he sought you out for advice well yeah he, he used to work for British Rail in Glasgow and of course went to school with Bobby Gillespie and Bobby and Alan came down to London I don't know when it was it was a long time ago 40 years ago I guess and uh he had, they had this band together called The Laughing Apple and where Trey Red signed the publishing on The Laughing Apple, which we still have to this day. And Alan was one of those people that you saw a potential, but he didn't really know if he would, he would realise it because he was very driven, he loved music. He was great with people, great at promoting things. And uh, when he said he had this club originally called The Living Room, which was in Camden where he had 
we had gigs every week. I used to go there sometimes. And it was a bit like a living room with settees and it wasn't very big, but it soon built up a quite a large following. And I got to know Alan reasonably well. And um, of course, he started, he started the label. He had the Jesus and Mary chain, which he managed. He had the label, put out Primal Scream, all kinds of bands that did really, really well over the years. And we're going to play now anyway the... Uh, a track by the Laughing Apple, which was Alan's first band, which is called Precious Feeling. <laughs>
That was Precious Feeling by The Laughing Apple, which is featured also in Creation Stories. And I have actually done an interview with Alan McGee as well. You have, Fairy yeah. TV, three parts, three, three hours parts long. Are, yeah, yeah. yeah. I That's forget... a really good interview, that one. Yeah, it's, he's such a character. And yeah, of course, we worked with him. Uh, you know, a few years ago on the new music label. 359. 359, yeah, yeah. which a lot of the artists are still going strong today. Uh, yeah. yeah it, was, it was a pleasure to work with him. Yeah, that's one of the things we always like about about Trey Red, the characters we meet, and we try and work with really interesting characters because they're the ones that are going to do something with their lives or have done something mm. with their lives, yeah. yeah definitely. So, so it's not all Trey Red, although we have played Alice Cooper, who's not in Trey Red. I'm going to play, finish by playing Two Traps by Blackmore's Night, who, and they're both, that's both tracks on the album, on Idel Records, their new album on Idel Records, which is their 13th album. And uh, I didn't know much about them. I knew basically who they were, but I had no idea they'd done 13 albums. Of course, Blackmore's Night is, uh, the Blackmore comes from Richie Blackmore, founding member of, of Deep Purple. And he actually... Uh, met the singer in Blackmore's Night, Candice Knight is her name, at a Purple gig in New York many, many moons ago. And she came up to him as a 21-year-old, very beautiful woman, and asked him for his autograph. And of course, one thing led to another. And I think it was about 25 years later, they got married and started a family. And she has a wonderful voice, and they've had this project going for so many years now, called Blackmore's Night. And I'm going to play two tracks from the new album. I'll play them back to back. Wish You Were Here and Second Element. Wish you were here Me oh my countryman I wish you were here I wish you were here Don't you know the snow is getting colder And I miss you like hell And I'm feeling blue Wish you were here me, oh my country man, I wish you were here. I wish you were here. Don't you know the snow is getting colder? And I miss you like hell. And I'm feeling blue. I've got fear.
That was Wish You Were Here and Second Element from Blackmore's Night. And as I was saying earlier, that's Richie Blackmore and Candice Knight. And Richie Blackmore, we'll be hearing more by him in the shows to come because he features quite heavily on the Joe Meek uh, T-Chess tapes because he was in an instrumental band called The Outlaws and played on the hits by Hines. He played with Screaming Lord Such, with Glenda Collins. So he's had a really interesting career right from his beginning. So we've talked a lot, Matt and I. I hope we haven't overrun by too much. But thanks for listening to uh, Trey Red Radio. And we hope we will not see you, but you'll hear us again soon. <laughs>